Um, but in this case, I actually want to process this report of a missing part that just came in from our warehouse agent. And so unfortunately, this missing ear pad report doesn't give me enough information to know what to do next. So I'm going to go ahead and start a chat with the agent, uh, and we'll launch this, uh, this uh, interface to do that. So I'll say that, um, hi, Agent 5, uh, I had a few questions for you. And now what I want to do is actually generate a couple of discovery questions that I can ask to figure out uh, what's going on with this item, if it's a systemic issue, um, and I'm not quite sure how to ask that question. So clicking this button is actually kicking off a workflow to get the information from GPT-4. So I'm going to go ahead and submit that into the chat. And now let's go ahead and hop over to our mobile app to see what this looks like from the customer's perspective, or from the agent's perspective, rather. Here we go. So uh, we've got the questions here, and the question is, were the ear pads already missing? and have other customers reported similar issues. Um, so we'll say customer reported uh, missing on delivery, no similar issues. And we'll send that off. So I got the message back on this side. Um, and I think probably the next thing to do here is we're going to issue a refund for this customer because they sent the item back. But we actually want to keep them as a happy customer. So we're going to generate a coupon code that we can include uh, that the agent can send to the customer, give them a discount off their next purchase with the same brand. So when we are clicking on that button, uh, that button is triggering a query to a workflow. Uh, we can see it runs the get discovery questions query. So let's go ahead and see where that is. And we can find it here. So get discovery questions um, is right here. And what this does is it makes a webhook request to start the query. Um, and we can provide the issue and the item description. And that's going to kick off the information and we'll get back the prompt um, for that item. So again, the way that works is we click the button and the workflow runs and then we get back our prompt. So if we take a look at the workflow that's powering this, this is our remediation ideas workflow. And you can see again, it kicks off with this webhook request. We get an issue and an item and we submit those to GPT-4 with an instruction to return two beef questions to understand the root cause. So we should get our information back and then we can submit it back to the requester. And in fact, that's what this return block is doing. This is something we didn't see in the last workflow but this is going to take the information that we received from GPT-4 and return it to the requester uh, as a response to this initial webhook request. And that's how we're able to receive the information um, and put it into the message input. So this is really important because it takes retool from being, uh, retool workflows from being simply a, a trigger-based um, automation tool to actually being a full-fledged API builder. We're essentially building a REST API here using visual components where we can describe the inputs and the outputs and return information back up to the front end. So that's really, really important to realize that workflows goes way beyond just back-end process automation. When our fulfillment team received uh, the issue report of a missing ear pad, they also saw that there was a category attached to this record, which is missing part. Now that category wasn't provided by the agent in the warehouse. All they did was provided this free text for missing ear pad, but this was dynamically categorized and there's actually a backend process integrated with GPT-4 under the hood to make this work. So let's take a look at that process so we can understand what it does. So here is our categorization workflow. This is built inside of retool workflows and retool workflows are a series of logical steps that either integrate with databases, APIs, or smart blocks uh, that use GPT to provide more information uh, to the application. So let's see how we can go through this process and, and show you how it works. So the first thing that happens with this process is that uh, an API request comes in to trigger the workflow. This is happening in the mobile application when our uh, agent hits the submit button. It's going to kick off this workflow process. It's also going to provide the ID of the record that was created with that defect report. So let's go ahead and find a record that we can work on here. So here's record 40. I'm going to go ahead and take out this missing part um, so we can start from scratch. Now we can do is run the start trigger and then get the defect by querying our SQL database. So we can see that we get the defect information, the issue comes back, and there's no category specified. This is actually a resource query that's operating against our, um, our Postgres database. Um, this is, in fact, the uh, same kind of resource query that we showed in the front end builder. So all of the resources that were set up there, APIs, databases, they're all available to workflows without any additional work. Now, once we've got this information, we can use a low code block to determine where to go next. And we can see that there is no category on the defect, so we should proceed on in the flow. If we wanted to, we could add additional blocks. So if there was already a category, what other action should we take? But in this case, we're just going to do this simple if statement. 
And the next step is we're going to use a smart block. This is a really sophisticated integration with OpenAI's uh, GPT-4 model under the hood that allows us to submit information about the issue along with a prompt that tells GPT-4 how to categorize these uh, issues based on a couple of uh, guiding statements. So we're describing what cosmetic damage looks like, what missing parts looks like, what no damage looks like, and what we should do if there's no information we can return undefined. So we'll go ahead and run this smart block. Um, this is going to submit to GPT-4's um, API endpoints. Um, one thing I want to point out actually is that Retool has a special relationship and a partnership with OpenAI uh, that allows us to access their uh, endpoints and their products before the rest of the general market. So when GPT-4 was first available, it was actually, uh, if you wanted to use it, get your hands on it, it was faster to start using Retool workflows. You could get access to this feature in advance of this model being available to the rest of the general public. And this is really exciting. We see AI as a big part of our roadmap. So this is showing some categorization that we're doing uh, you know, based on, on free text input. Um, but we actually see a lot of other applications for AI to um, improve uh, the time to value of Retool and, and really speed up development. So we're going to see uh, lots of improvements to the code editing experience, doing autocomplete suggestions for SQL and JavaScript. We'll also see the ability to create sample UIs and templates based on natural language input. It's very exciting to see how this can accelerate our developers' workflows. But back to the workflow that we're working on now, we've got our missing parts category, and so we'll now submit it to our back office REST API so we can write that value into the database. We saw a successful write, and so if we hop back into um, our database, we'll see it's updated now with missing parts. So that's one of the hyper-automation workflows that we're running.